All right, testing, testing. Looks like the audio works when I uh, bash the mic in. Just going to get everything sort of set up, and then we will uh, start soon. Just trying to get my uh, monitor up. That seems like it's working. I'm going to go on mute and I will be back very shortly.
Okay, I am uh, I'm live. Let's see what we can do here. Um, just got a few windows open that I want to sort out. And then once I get myself, I was trying to get myself organized, but I spent all my time doing a tweet. Um, let's just make sure that this is streaming live Twitch. And I'll mute my tablet. All right, looks like we're live. Looks like everything is good. Um, all right, so today I want to, I need to, t I was like kind of complaining about it on, I was complaining about it a little bit on um, on Twitter, but hold on, I'm trying to get the mic where I want it. Basically, I've just been like feeling really like bleh for the past few days. So my, um, my thought for today is that we're going to try to create a pretty interesting, um, the hell is this? Uh, I don't feel like updating my printer drivers now. All right, so let me take a look here. I have a shared Dropbox temp. All right, so I have um, I have this thing here, and kind of what I want to do is. I want to recreate this in Pixel Vision 8. And I've been I've been playing around a lot with Zelda late, Zelda 2 lately. And what um what I really like about Zelda 2, it's a really it's a brutally hard game. It's probably one of the hardest Nintendo games I've ever played. Um, but there's some really great artwork in it and some really good animation. And it's it's really good. Let me let me make that bigger. It doesn't look like can I make it bigger? Here we go. So what I've done is I've come here and I've slowed this down to um, to the point of where it's just, I can actually look at each frame by frame and try to take a look at what's happening. And what I felt, what I feel like doing today is we're gonna go through and we're gonna recreate this scene um, in, in, uh, um, in Pixel Vision 8. So, all right, there's a lot of things that we're gonna to need to do in order to get this working. I'm gonna open up, um, so I, previously, last week I was, I, I've been working on this port of, um, oh, that's probably playing, is it? Maybe, did I mute it? I don't know, I don't remember. Where's the, is the audio muted? Yeah, okay, it's muted. Um, let's go in here and let's set this scale to four. So it's a little bit bigger. And I was going to create a new, um, let's get this going and let's do this. We're going to call this um, Zelda palette swap example. And this will be the project that we're going to work on today. So um, I'm going to, I have a new, um, I have a new print working directory. I have a new workspace folder that I was I was working on on my other computer, and we'll set that here. Basically, the goal is that we're going to try to um, let's see if we can create a new. Well, I don't know. Let, let's get organized first. I think um, the way that I want to handle this is I was going in and I was pulling out some reference stuff, so I should have all the reference. Oh, cool! I like I like when uh, my computer doesn't work. Uh, that's Mega Man. We don't want that. Um, I don't need the boss, but what I did need is this palace stuff. And uh, I have some link graphics. All right. So I think I have all of the pieces that I need to actually work with. Um, what we're going to do is let's open uh, this up in Photoshop. I, I probably don't need the slow motion one. That's more for when I write the tutorial on it. What I'm going to do is... Uh, We'll open this up in Photoshop as an animated GIF, and we're, we'll keep that open as a reference point. And uh, what I need to do is look at a view. There should be like a timeline or something. Window timeline. And this will just let me sort of uh, scrub through. Uh, Photoshop is like incredibly like slow when it comes to, hold on, I just wanna close all this crap. How do I like close these windows? Close tab group, 
close tab group. Ah, whatever. That's fine. All right, and then let's open up. Uh, let's make this full size. So, all right, what, what we're going to be able to do is. Um, we're going to look at all the different color variations and sort of try to figure out. Uh, see, look, it's, it's missing some. So this isn't going to work. We're going to have to use the slow down, the slow down version. Um, this is something with the GIF compression that like makes it annoying. Let's open this up in Photoshop. I swore I had set get info. I wanted all my GIFs to open up in Photoshop. Open with Photoshop, change all, continue. All right, so we'll open this up. Now, I don't know, sometimes I get in these like, these like funks where I can't really like focus and it usually it depends like if there's like a lot of like, if I have like a lot of stress going on or like work has me doing like some sort of like mundane sort of boring task or I just haven't been creative in a while. Like my wife was out of town um, for the past few weeks well, for the past week, um, and like I, I, I took the opportunity to hang out with my boys and spend some time with them, which I, I really loved, and and I, 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 I want to say like I don't do enough of, but I have, but lately I've been spending a lot more time doing that, and um, because of that, I really didn't work much this weekend. So, and I, I haven't been working like I do my own code stuff. That's like sort of what keeps me going in life, like. I mean, most people you have like a day to day job and I actually my, my day job is pretty good. So I, I really don't have much complaints, but you wind up where like there's some passion that you really have and you want to just do it um, on your own. And that's sort of what all this is. So anyways, then I just babbling on. What I want to do is this. We're going to um, we're going to create a new um, family system game. And if I play this right now, it's just going to give us this sort of empty uh, game template. What we're going to do is we're going to spend the next hour just going through and cleaning up the sprites and setting up the color palettes and getting everything the way that it should be. And then we'll, um, we'll sort of go from there. Now, there's a few things that I want to do in order to get this working. The first though is let's, um, I should actually do one last thing. Let me look up, um, Zelda to uh, font sprites. Um, somewhere around here, there must be. Download this sheet. I'm like not particularly sure if I wanted to go like all out into the UI stuff. Let's let's hold off on the UI for right now, um, and let's get let's just see if we can get this basic uh, scene sort of going. So now we're gonna have to um, well let's do this. We're gonna start by um, opening up this uh, island palace reference thing. Why? Like I redid the computer, so like all my stuff isn't isn't set up how it should. Uh, let's do Photoshop, continue. Yeah, I want to I want to change everything. All images open in Photoshop. All right, so we're going to open up this image here. And what we're going to do is we're going to go all the way to the end. And let's just sort of match this up. It basically goes to this edge piece. So we should be able to copy out this. Oh, why is it in inches? Oh my God, I hate. Okay, I don't know why my computer keeps locking up. That's like really weird. I'm like just, I'm continually, um, cursed by like all kinds of glitches and problems. Uh, column size 
gutter points. And what we need to do is we're gonna set this to pixels um, every uh, 16 pixels and we'll have a two uh, subdivision. And what I wanna pull out is, so the, the Nintendo's resolution is basically 256 by 240. So, if, so let me, so I hate when it like, uh, it's so annoying. It's like really hard to get like accurate values. Oh, driving me nuts here. 256. Isn't there like a way to like just, like I wish it would let me like, uh, I don't want that. Now, I don't even know how to get out of this menu. How do I get out of this? Okay, can I use this tool because Photoshop is terrible. I thought there was like a way to like, 256. by 240. All right, good, whew. That was anger, that was really frustrating. All right, so what we're doing is we're making a selection. Uh, anyway, Orange Pixel, I'm not remaking Zelda. What I, all I'm, my, my goal for today is I want to, um, I want to recreate this effect in Pixel Vision 8 and sort of talk about how to do like palette swapping for tile map stuff. And uh, I figured I would uh, I would use this as an example. It's a really cool example and it's a very easy one to sort of understand. Uh, so what I'm trying to do is figure out where the edges are for their tiles. If, if I was grading this, my gut would tell me that the far, like, that the, the pattern would start on the left edge. So you're getting this like double black pixel here because it's not, no, well, it's gotta be, that's like a really weird break. It's gotta be like this. All right, let's just copy this and we'll take a look at what it looks like on the grid. So of course, Oh, shoot, that stinks. No, wait, what the hell is going on? Why is Photoshop being a pain in the ass today? Oh, hey, okay, eight times the charm. All right, so let's, uh, ah. so what we gotta do is we gotta get the grid, we gotta show the grid and the way that I set up the grid is that it's um, 16, it's 16 by 16, which are the, so like these guys should be exactly 16. Okay, yeah, this is how this is how the grid works in, uh, in this. Oh, it's hard to see when I zoom in like that. You get the dashes or you get the, like the smaller per pixel. But all right, so like a big tile like this is a 16 by 16 block. And that's sort of how, um, that's how the Nintendo worked um, even though it rendered out eight by eight um, sprites, the background actually uh, shared, a, it was a 16 by 16 grid that shared palettes. So what we're gonna do is this is gonna become the background for our game. And uh, I, got, I got the new game sort of set up here. All I gotta do is, um, well, we're gonna save this as a PNG and we don't need transparency. We're gonna save this and now I gotta find where the hell, where's this project folder? Uh, Nest demos. We'll just put this down here because I have a feeling I'm gonna be uh, looking for this a lot. Um, Nest demos, workspace, sandbox, and we're gonna save this as uh, tile map dot png uh, the other thing that we're gonna have to do is um, for right now I'm just going to um, 
I'm going to save this as a sprites.png and see, I don't think any of this is going to work because the color, the color is going to be off. So one thing to note is that while, while I have a built-in um, color palette for Nintendo, um, this isn't always going to match up with what you find online. So we're going to have to, we're going to have to find uh, similar colors and sort of redo that. But one of the things I actually want to do is redo the color, uh, the colors so that they actually are in palettes, similar to how, um, there's a TV broadcast later in the year. <laughs> okay. It's an interesting comment. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up to mirror how the Nintendo uh, color space works. So I'm not going to do uh, regular colors. What I'm going to have is uh, we'll have uh, uh, four palettes here of of uh, three colors. One uh, will be the background color, and then we'll set up another four palettes for the background. And I'm going to sort of I'm going to take a stab. This isn't going to be as authentic as it could be, but we're going to take a sort of stab at what it what it would look like now. As you can see here, we're running into some problems where the, the black is the only color that matches up to our colors. So because of that, we're only getting some of the stuff parsed from that image. And, and the way that that works is that whatever I drop into the, um, let me close this. Uh, so this sandbox folder is where I'm working from. Whatever I, um, whatever I drop in here for sprites, the, uh, the game engine's automatically gonna parse for me. Uh, and then the tile map is gonna be built off of that. So let's come in here and uh, the other thing we're gonna do is let's open up our colors and let's try to, um, we're, gonna, we're gonna change some things around. And what we're gonna do is create a, um, a grayscale version of this. And, uh, oh, is that an eight? What's, what's an eight? Um, what we're going to do is um, we're going to convert this into grayscale, into four colors. Or actually, we're going to convert into three colors. I don't know. How do I want to make this work? Maybe the best way to do this is probably to... I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Let's get all the graphics we need in here. Um, I think the only other thing I need is Zelda, or Link in this case. Um, references, oh wait, there's some island stuff. We have the stone. All the stuff we need is already here. The only thing we need is Link. And I'll sort of explain what I'm doing and why. We're just gonna get one image of Link um, so if I look at this, uh, if I look at this, this reference image here, he, we're just going to get the standing version of him. So we'll just take, uh, we're just going to take this and then I'll, I'll match this up on the grid and we'll see where this actually fits. So, and we'll put him up here. And then we're going to use uh, Pixel Vision 8 to sort of cut him out. Yeah, the date, the date of the uh, game creator tool. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a uh, 1985. Oh, is that what your joke was about? It's 1985. It's always 1985 in Pixel Vision 8. All right, so, um, nope, wrong tool, magic wand. All right, so there's a link in all of his glory. And what we're gonna do is, um, he should just fit within this. They were like, they were like super efficient on, um, on how they, um, organize their artwork. So I'm not surprised that Link fits in exactly at like two sprites across and four sprites tall. Um, all right, so I think that's all the artwork that we really need. What we're gonna do is, uh, let me find my layers. I don't need this, close this tab group. 
whatever the hell that is. Uh, I don't need channels, I don't need paths. All I need are colors and layers. All right, so let's, uh, let's get these guys together. And then the other thing I just wanted to do real quick is, um, actually, let me pull this out for a second. And we're going to, um, what I'm trying to do is just create a uh, FF00FF, which is the mask color. I'm just trying to create one single uh, page that has all the sprite data that we need. And if we, um, oh, I need to get the stone. If I remember correctly, let me look at that other reference thing. Um, yeah, it had this like empty, we'll copy this out. Hey, look, I think they're off. Like this, whoever did this one, well, maybe it's just shifted over by one. My grid might just be off. All right, so we'll put this here. And then we just need to get uh, one of these stones. What's really cool about this is that, uh, so when they rip these sprites, they pulled them out with all the individual colors. All we need to do is actually just uh, do some palette swapping stuff. So this should fit. I, I'd be very surprised if this doesn't, wow, this really doesn't fit inside of a, this doesn't fit inside of a single sprite? That seems like incredibly wasteful. Whoa. My my gut is telling me that what they, no, wow. Like, this is like completely out of character for what I would expect of a Nintendo game. This guy should be a single thing. All right, whatever, we're gonna make him, we're gonna have to make him two sprites. That's really weird. I've like very rarely seen examples of, whoops, of stuff like that. Usually it's it's very close. <laughs> you could have drawn the whole thing by now. Look, there's an orange pixel uh, bragging. All right, I think uh, I think we got what we need for right now, and. Uh, that should get us going. Let's let's do this. We're gonna merge all of these layers down. Uh, let's flatten this with Command E, and then uh, I'm gonna close this. We don't need this. And what we got to do now? This is the part that sort of sucks. Is uh, I'm gonna pull this palette out here, and we're gonna try to rematch uh, the palette and get all these colors working correctly. So we'll start with a uh, link. I should move this closer. Once we get uh, enough of these going, it should it should be pretty straightforward. But we're going to start with. Um, all right. So the way that we do it is like this. I, I basically um, I try to select all the colors, and then go and find the um, the matching color. I believe it's this. Now, so my palette's going to be a little bit off. I mean, we could do it in reverse where we could just create a palette that we could create a palette that just uses these colors. I don't know. I mean, not like my palette's like particularly uh, accurate. Uh, no, it's not that. I feel like that's more accurate. Where's the, uh... I kind of feel like I don't want to waste my time with this. Um, well, I'll eventually I'll go through and I'll, I'll match up the palettes. I think what what's gonna be a better use of my time is uh, converting this stuff into grayscale. So these are 
the same this this and this so like some of this stuff um, so what we got to be very careful about is that some of this stuff is actually just regular background color and some of it isn't and what I got to figure out is like so something like here this uh, this totem guy this black is actually this is one two three this is the fourth color this is transparent and the background must has been set to black which is why the top bar is set to black so like here it's probably not but all right the reason i like spending some time trying to figure this out is i just want to figure out how to cut this up in a way that would make that makes the most sense I wonder if um, if I come over here, I feel like that red is probably it's so hard because I, I captured it from like a real from real Nintendo hardware. I feel like this red and this red are the, are supposed to be the same. There we go, my computer like locked, completely locked up again. I can't tell if it's because it's like, if it's just like, it's like thermal throttling. I have the lid closed on it. I don't know, I'm waiting for Apple to announce their new laptop. I need to get like a more powerful laptop. And uh, I'm hoping that next week they, they officially start supporting NVIDIA GPUs for external for external graphics card so I can get like a real external graphics card on this thing. All right, so, um, all right, back to what I was trying to figure out. Let's, I don't know, let's see if we can get this, this working. So this light red here, we'll start with this for a second. This light red, let's see, my color palette's like totally off. Um, Why don't we do this in reverse? Let's um, let's do this. We're just going to create a new palette from scratch. Uh, I need to set this to pencil mode. I hate to admit it, but I think Pascal was onto something where I should just redraw this stuff from scratch. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a palette for a uh, link, right? These are the three colors that make up link. Uh, if I, whoops, I hate when it does that. No, I know how to do it. Shoot. Here we go. All right, so that, that's that. Uh, this gem. Can I repeat that bit about you being right? Well, I, look, I don't want to admit it, but I mean, you know, I, I mean, I wouldn't have redrawn all this crap. I think that's like a stupid idea. <laughs> I'm just trying to, um, just trying to like move on with my day, right? All right, so that that's sort of, this is where we're going with the palette for right now. Um, let me actually uh, copy this over. Look, Pascal, sometimes you do have your moments. I mean, I consider you a inspiration to game devs everywhere. That's why I follow you and talk to you. That's why I go out of my way to see you in in uh, Amsterdam. But you're always so busy these days, man. It's been so long since we've like hung out. Uh, all right, oh, you know why I needed to do that? I need to make sure I got all the colors. But let's, let's just pull some of these things out here real quick and we'll, um, we'll test it out again. Uh, so I got my pencil selected here. I'm gonna come here and we're gonna pull out this white, this light pink and this, or light purple and dark purple. Like, there's very few colors. Like, they, they're, they're so good at like, they were so good at like, really like getting great looking like graphics with like some 
good fidelity without like using a lot of colors. Like if we look at it, these are all the colors that exist inside of this one scene. Um, so let's do this. Let's merge this. And what we should be able to do is if I, if I um, select all these colors, uh, everything should be selected. So if I hit delete, we should just be left with the empty black. All right, so that works. Any reason why you're just using pre rip sprites and tile sheets? Um, well, they're not going to be, I'm trying to format them in a way that Pixel Vision 8 is going to understand. Um, so th there's some stuff that you need to use for Pixel Vision 8. It, like, it, 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 basically you can dump any image into a folder and it will automatically um, render it or it'll automatically like sort of cut it up. Like, let me, um, let me, let me finish this off and I can sort of explain it a little better. So let's put this into sprites and hit replace. And now if we uh, refresh this, so here are all the sprites that make up the scene. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get Pixel Vision 8 to do the, the hard work for us. Uh, so the missing component is that in order for Pixel Vision 8 to work correctly, you need to have the colors split up. And so what was missing was that we weren't, uh, I just didn't have the palettes and stuff done. So, so what we're gonna do is, um, these, these four, well, this, these, this, uh, this is one palette set, two palette sets, three palette sets, and four palette sets. So this first block would be sprite uh, palettes that the Nintendo could use. And this second block of memory would have been um, the background. And that's sort of how I, how I split it up. So what we're gonna do is when we go in and we change, um, we're gonna change these colors on the fly, which is what the Nintendo was doing. When we go and we change these colors, it's going to, um, it's basically going to make everything, uh, it's gonna make the color swap that we're looking for. Uh, for some particular reason, I'm having trouble like speaking at like and doing stuff at the same time today. Like this is sort of where, this is like where my creativity, I don't know, like I'm in like a little bit of a, like a funk. I'm in, in a uh, melancholy, 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 melancholy. All right, so the next thing that I want to do is I'm going to pull um, this out. And I'm going to, well, the reason I'm pulling this out is that um, we're going to have to basically, um, we're going to have to pull out the black that's used in the totem. FF0, FF. So FF00, FF is the default mask color. Whenever Pixel Vision 8 sees that, it just treats it as transparent. Um, you could just use transparent, but it's um, it's just a little easier to keep it this way so you can see what's going on. Because the trick is gonna be, we're gonna set the background to black and um, and then this will, it'll just fill it in. And that's because the Nintendo really was limited in the amount of colors per sprite. So there's one color here, two colors and three colors per sprite, that's it. The fourth color would have had to come from the background. Um, so let's merge this down and then I want to uh, save it in our sprites. Oops, hit save, replace. Uh, and now if we come back in here and we reload this, um, we'll see the totem guy has this uh, transparent area. If we hit the mask color, it'll show you whatever the background color is. The default background color right now is is uh, is not set. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna go into, we can actually do it here, but um, I wanna create two pages of color. And um, this is sort of the hacky way that I have this working in Pixel Vision 8. Uh, let me come back in here. Let's let's copy this and we're gonna revert this for a second and I'll sort of show you what's going on. Um, height eight, uh, we're gonna make this eight. And we're gonna create uh, two blocks of memory that will represent 
this is going to be all the system colors and this is going to be all of the palette colors. And um, now if I just resave this and come back into Pixel Vision 8 and we look at our colors, you'll see that these are all the system colors that the Nintendo had. Um, but I'm not, I don't have, a, this doesn't read a second page. So I need to go in and edit the, um, the data file, the chip here. So let's come in here and let's set a second page of colors and we'll save this. And now if we go back into our colors, you'll see that it automatically gives us a second page and these are where our palettes are. Um, and this is sort of how I, um, this is how I deal with um, separating out system colors and palettes. Because what we're gonna do is we wanna, we wanna have all the system colors exist and instead of like telling Pixel Vision 8, hey, here's a new hex, draw this color. We're just gonna say, all right, um, go to this, I this color ID 84 and swap it out with 28. So we're gonna have to match these colors up with the Nintendo ones, but I'm not too worried about that. I just wanna see one thing. Oh, hey, cool. This all sort of works. Interesting. I don't know how this works. This should be broken. And these are the flag colors. All right, whatever. So, um, all right, so that works now. And um, if we come back here to our sprites, it's still gonna parse this correctly. So we're looking good there. And now the next thing we need to do is, so if we run the game, uh, you're gonna see sort of like this half broken background. Um, so what, what I wanna do is, um, I'm gonna come in here and let's, um, I'm just gonna mask, well, you know what, let's, uh, let's do this. I think we should get the palettes, the, the colors closer. And then this way everything sort of matches up. So what I gotta do is I gotta try to find the right colors that match. Um, and I'm not 100% sure how I wanna do this real quick. I think like this and this match up, this green and like this green. This is gonna stink. This isn't how I like really wanna do this, but this is, this is the hardest part. It's like whenever you get sprites that are ripped from somewhere else, like they, the colors just don't match up and they don't give you a full palette. So it's actually like if they if they ripped them from like a um, from like an emulator, you're stuck with the colors that are based on what the emulator felt like running. Not like my colors are more accurate or anything. Um, all right, so let's see if we can get enough of this here that we'll, we'll deal with the purples later. Those are probably the easiest. All right, we're gonna merge this layer down, and we're gonna take this brown, which is all of Link, and we're gonna change it to this. We're gonna get this green, uh, which would be all of Link's in, inside color, and we're gonna change that to, I think it's this. Uh, we're gonna take his this tan color, which is his skin color, and we're gonna change it to this. Then we need to find this red, which is this gem. And let's set it to, that might be too bright. I'm gonna hold off on that one for a second. I'm not 100% sure what that color is, but I definitely know that this color is this. And this white is the same, so that's good. So now what we're looking for is this light, like red. And I'm not, I'm not sure what that is from my palette. Like it, could be that, but it, oh, I gotta zoom in and look at these colors a little bit better here. Maybe it's that, there we go, that's what it is. We'll take this dark red here and that's gonna be this. I really don't like that red at all. So it's like a more orange. All right, let's try this again. No, no. Like I pulled this, um, oh, it's that right there. 
Look at that. All right, so that red and this red match up. The blacks are the same. And then what I just need to do is here, I just need to pull out that light pink is right here. This darker pink is right there. And this, this deep, sorry, purple is right here. All right, so if we did this correctly, what should happen is if we select all these colors, they should now uh, map up correctly to what we're expecting. If I hit delete, it should pull out all the color. There we go, perfect. There we go. So now the now the colors match up. All right, and I'll show you some of the cool stuff. Like, so once you sort of, um, I mean, it's funny. Like, I actually started out Pixel Vision Eight using um, Nest sprites and stuff. So I, I, I was making sure that it felt like a little bit. So I, I knew that it was working the way that I wanted it to. Um, but once you get past this color matching stuff and your artwork matches the color palette that you're using everything is pretty smooth sailing from there. Like, so now watch this. So what we're gonna do is, uh, we're gonna save this um, sprites, sprites PNG. And now if I come back here and let's just double check that this runs. Uh, so we're getting all of our sprites, good, good. Um, we have all of our colors, which is good. And, um, now all we need to do is uh, we're going to save out a version of this for the tile map and I'm going to show you how I'm going to generate out a, uh, a tiled uh, tile map. So first I just want to go in and I just want to modify this PNG and I just want to pull out uh, this top area and we're going to make this magenta. So this is what the background would actually look like on the nest. And uh, what we're gonna do from there is now if we come in and we look at the tile map tool, oh, we missed the uh, really cool drawing effect. Um, what we're gonna see is it's going to, uh, it's gonna generate out a really large uh, tile map. That's just the default tile map. I'm actually going to, um, let's go into the, the chip here and fix this. So uh, data, uh, we're gonna change the, um, see a 256 divided by eight is uh, 32 and uh, 240 divided by eight is 30. We'll save this and go back to our tile map. This will just render a lot faster. Now, now we have a uh, fully working tile map that's the right size. If we were to play this, we're gonna see uh, the tile map is rendering correctly, like some of the edges and stuff we're, we're missing before. Um, and then we just gotta replace the text. So um, that works. Uh, man, it looks so good. Like when, like, so it, it took me a little while to get the stuff up and running and like cleaning up the color stuff. But as you can see, like once you got past the color matching, like now all the sprite stuff is is all importing. You can see how how few sprites they actually used. And if I go in here and uh, I'm gonna compress this right now. If we go back to our sandbox and we take a look at this new sprites.cache.png, you'll see that uh, Pixel Vision 8 went through and just saved out the images that we needed. Everything else is uh, has been cropped out, so that's sort of like the the power of of setting up stuff visually like this. So, and that's sort of the flow of how I work. Like, I'll create all the sprites and everything, or like the the basic image. Like, I wanted you to be able to create a comp of your game, put that into the folder, let Pixel Vision Eight cut it all up, and then once you do that, you can save out the optimized stuff, and Pixel Vision Eight won't spend time like trying to pull out all the sprites for you. It's all optimized now. So you'll see like when I reload, this is like sort of instant. And um, now we go back to the tile map. What we're gonna do is we're gonna compress the tile map. 
and uh, take a look at this. So let's open up tiled. So what compressing the tile mat did, uh, yeah, just open it up. Security. Again, I, uh, I, re I had to rebuild this computer. So everything is, uh, it still, still needs to be sort of set up. All right, so we're gonna open up the, um, if we go to our nest demos, workspace, sandbox, we created a new tilemap.json file. And we're gonna open up this guy. And now you can see we have this uh, perfectly imported into tiled. So um, since this is pretty basic, there isn't much that we need to do in tiled. Um, I'm actually gonna quit that. I just wanted to sort of show how, how sort of powerful Pixel Vision 8's uh, importer and exporter are now. Um, all right, so we have this all up and running. Let's open up uh, uh, Adam. And let's see. So uh, I was doing some other stuff with this. What I want to do is let me uh, close. Let me close out this project and create a uh, we're going to open up a new. Ugh, yeah, I want to use the helper tool. Open. I don't know, there's something weird with Adam where it doesn't know how to open stuff. All right, so I'm going to drag the sandbox onto Adam. And watch it do nothing. Ugh. All right. Come on, Adam, you can do this. All you need to do is open up a project. There we go. It did it. It just didn't feel like showing us. Um, all right. And well, we have all of our code here. What I was kind of thinking of doing was, um, let me open up Ghost Rider. I wonder if this is going to actually load the latest version of Ghost Rider. Let's toggle the preview bar. So, okay. So Ghost Rider is a, um, a fun little thing that I've been working on where it's going to turn this into a tutorial. So I wrote a, um, I wrote a plugin for Adam. Uh, I actually have it as Google Docs. I, I have like several versions of this. I have a C-sharp command line version. I have a Google Docs version. And my latest, more up-to-date version is um, is in Atom. And what the plugin does is it, um, it takes a Lua file like this and it looks at the comments and it unwraps it and it goes line by line in the code and it uh, turns it literally into a step-by-step -step tutorial. So one of the things I wanted to do is as I write out the code to make this work, I wanted to, uh, I'm gonna turn this into a tutorial. Like what I've, been what I've been working on for the past year with Pixel Vision 8 is getting it to the point where I can go and like over the weekend, I spend a lot of time like playing old Nintendo games with my boys. So it's like, all right, I captured this video from my Nintendo and I just want to create this scene and just show you how this has been done. But I want to do it in like the least amount of code possible. So the hardest part of our project is already done now. We have all the sprites. We don't need to touch them or worry about them. We have our background now and we have um, the basic structure for the code and, oh, and the new colors. So what we're going to do is um, I'm just going to start pulling out stuff here. Whoops. Um, let's do this. We don't need this. Um, we don't need to figure out the display at all. We don't need anything for update. And all we need to do is redraw the display. So every time I save, it updates the tutorial. So now our tutorial is only six steps. So if you wanted to get the basic shell of a Pixel Vision 8 game up and running, all you need to do is create an init. init. Uh, you add in a background color, you create an update, and you create a draw. And then inside the draw, you call redraw. And if we go here and we play this, you now have our level from Zelda. So let's take a look now at how we can get some other stuff um, sort of working. Now, what we could do is uh, we could spend some time and we could sort of like, like if we wanted to draw a link, which is probably our first task, um, we can come in here and we can basically look up all the sprite IDs and sort of pull them out but that's kind of annoying. I don't want to do that. 
what we're going to do is we're going to copy link sprite, uh, create a new file, then we're going to save this out. And inside of our project folder, we're going to create a new folder and we're going to call this sprite builder and hit create. And we're going to call this uh, link. And then we're going to go and uh, we're going to do the same thing, but for this. And let's open this up, create our file, save it. Did that copy everything over? Oh, yeah, good. I just couldn't see it. Uh, save it. And we're going to call this uh, gem and save it. And now, um, if we come into Pixel Vision 8 and we refresh this, we'll now have an option to use the Sprite Builder. And what the Sprite Builder is going to do is it's going to look through the uh, Sandbox folder. And it's going to look at this and cut it up into sprites and then look for where it is in memory and create a, uh, a, a Lua table for it. And the same thing with Link. So let's go ahead and we're going to hit Build. And you can see it now created an SB-Sprites Lua file. If we uh, open this up, whoops. SB uh, sprites, you'll see that Pixel Vision 8 has already generated out two sprites for us, a gem and a link. So now here is, the, this is like what I've been refining for a long time in Pixel Vision 8. Like look at how fast it'll take us to actually do this. So um, what we're gonna do right now is um, we're just gonna call draw sprites. Oh, hey, this isn't linked. Hold on a second, I need to, um, I want to link the uh, code complete stuff. Actually, you know what? I lied. I'm going to, um, what I'm going to do is I think for this, we're going to, um, let's go to the preferences. Let's go to package update install. And we're going to look for uh, pixel vision eight. Uh, maybe it's PV8 API. Autocomplete Atom. I can't remember. The, oh, there we go. PV8 Game Creator. So here we're going to do, we're going to install this now. And this plugin allows you to get code completion uh, inside of Atom when you're working with Pixel Vision 8. So, all right. I'm going to just make some space down here. And we're gonna do uh, draw sprites, right? So um, now we have all the uh, code complete that we need. And all we need to do is do a uh, link. Now I'll show you real quick. I'll move this over here so you can sort of see how I'm referencing it. But we have a global variable called link. And now all we need to do is uh, link dot sprite IDs. Uh, we're gonna put them at zero, zero for right now. His width is going to be link.width. And um, I'm actually going to get rid of all this other stuff. And we're just going to keep this really simple. I love when this updates. Oh my God, this is so great. But look, we had six steps in order to build this project. We're now at step seven. I think um, I think Ghost Rider is probably like the greatest thing to come out of. Like Pixel Vision 8 is cool and I'm glad I wrote it. But having, um, having Ghost Rider to write tutorials is gonna be a lot of fun. All right, so let's run this. And uh, we're getting an error. Attempt an index of a nil value, 59. Uh, what did I type wrong here? Sprite IDs, link with. Oh, hey, problem is, is that what we need to do is um, load script. Uh, SB sprites. So we didn't load the script. Therefore, it didn't know what to do. Um, all right, so look at that. So now we have um, link drawing at the top of our screen. And we can just copy this and do link. Um, actually, what we're going to do is uh, gem. And we'll do gem and you're not going to see it because link's going to be in the way. I'll just comment that out for a second, but now we can just draw the gem. All right. So, um, 
I'm gonna take these and I'm gonna copy this out of here. And instead of loading this in, I think I'm just gonna hard code them. And we'll just make them local. And we'll save this in case we need it as a reference. But basically, since this tutorial is so simple, all we're gonna do is create these variables. And as you can see right now, it just says like add local variables at the top of our class. And we're gonna add these two local variables. And then it's gonna create a new function called init. And it, it, it's actually smart enough to, it does the, uh, Ghostwriter is smart enough to do the code lines. So it knows it needs to write in the next line. It gives you a space for your function at 04. And then at line 04, it tells you where to do the background color. All right, so the other thing I wanna do is, um, let's go into, uh, let's go into, our comp and we're gonna have to figure out where to draw this gem. So what I want to do is get it to where it's um, it's centered at the right. Now, I have a feeling like, um, no, that's really weird. Is that gem bigger than the, let's look at the video. Where the hell did I put the video? Uh, let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of this. Get rid of this. Get rid of this. There we go. All right, so just what we're going to do, we want to center it here. And in order to do that, we're just going to have to find, um, I'm going to just copy this, paste it down. And um, that's sort of, that's close enough. Um, all we, now all we need to do is just figure out, um, the X and Y position. I should zoom in a little bit more. So we'll draw it from here. So, uh, 125, 101. So it's 124 by 100. 124 by 100. And now if we, uh, whoops, let's rerun the game. You'll see the gem is now in place. I feel like it's not high enough. So let's make this um, 98. There we go. That's a little bit better. All right, and then uh, for link, what we wanna do is, um, We got to figure out where to put Link. So Link is standing with his sword basically in that guy's snout. So we're going to say that he's like right about there. So I need a 114 by 144. 114 by 144. I'm actually. I'm actually impressed by how quickly this is coming together. I don't know if Pascal got bored and moved on with his life, but uh, I should be able to get this up and running pretty good. Like, I think that's like pretty close. It's interesting how compressed, like vertically compressed the, uh, the images from the original Nintendo. So, all right, so that's, that's, that's our entire scene in Pixel Vision 8 right now. So the next thing that we need to do, I think what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take a quick five minute break and go have a snack. And then when I come back, we're gonna get the, uh, the gem to move up. In fact, we could probably just do that right now. Like that, that, that shouldn't take very long. So one of the things that, um, one of the interesting things that I've learned from just doing um, uh, the Pixel Vision 8 stuff is that, uh, I'm gonna get rid of this. We'll just leave it like this. Uh, from, from Ghost Rider is that I sort of have to reverse the way that I create some of this stuff. So what we're going to do is if, if we were to build this out and I wanted to get you like the fastest way to build this out, it would be exactly like this, right? Um, right now, everything is, uh, is laid out. We're just going to make one quick change 
and uh, we're going to create a local uh, gem position equals x equals 124, um, y equals uh, 98. And what I'm kind of thinking about is like, should we, um, should we create a better object here? Yeah, we can do something like this. X equals 124, uh, Y equals uh, 98. And uh, what we're going to do is um, we'll just do gem x, gem y. And for uh, link, we're going to do a very similar thing. x equals 1, 1, 4 y equals 144. And now um, it's just a little bit cleaner. So I started I started using Ghostwriter to go back through my like the built-in demos and I realized that the built-in demos are like really like hard to follow. So I'm trying to come up with like a, a interesting way of restructuring these, these this code so that it, it works correctly. Um, what I want to do here is have a start what actually we're going to put this down here so if, if we were to run this tutorial right now it would run exactly like this um, what I want to do is uh, we're going to take a gem dot start y equals um, let's figure out where we want to start the gem it was some it was somewhere like down here well I don't know why I'm like making this crap up let me just look at the actual video So it starts out right below the nose. I don't know why both of these are selected. So he's there, the gem should be there, and then the gem is, let's see, it starts right above his knee, right? Like So it's like almost like it starts right there maybe a little below his sword. Right there. All right, that's where we're gonna go for it. So all I need is the Y position, which is 158. 158 gem and Y equals 98. Um, there's multiple ways we could do this. I think the uh, the gem speed, we'll, we'll set this to like 10. Um, and we're gonna do something like this. Uh, gem, well, we could do it like, we're gonna change the, uh, first off, we're gonna, um, What I want to do is um, I wanted to use this example to sort of override the values. And I just got to, I'm just trying to think real quick of like what the best way to do this is. If we want to start x, y, x value, and y equals uh, gem y. And then we're going to reset the value to down down there. So watch, you'll see how this. It's sort of like a. Ah, it doesn't like this idea. Unexpected symbol near X. Uh, what line was that at? Uh, line eight. 
Yeah, we need to have a comma there. And a comma there. All right, rerun this real quick. And uh, okay, cool. So what you see is the way that I'm structuring this tutorial, and it's just because of the way that I have the code working, is that um, you, you, you basically get up to this point and everything we need for the entire, like for the display is already done, right? So that's done in basically 10, 10 steps it takes to, to draw the gems and link and all that other crap. Then once we get past that step, what we're going to do is we're going to force it to sort of reset. I don't know what's going on with Adam lately, but I lose the mouse cursor. We're going to force it to reset this uh, Y value. We're going to save out the Y value. We're going to reset the gem to where we want it to begin, and we're going to set its speed. And now all we need to do is um, look at this. I keep losing my mouse. Uh, if gem y is greater than or is less than is greater than or equal to gem dot n y um, so if it is less than this value what we're going to do is wait if gem y is less than this value, we are going to take um, gem y equals gem y minus speed multiplied by time delay, by time delta. And then uh, all we need to do is make sure if gem y is less than gem end y, actually, we only want to do this here. Uh, oh, I'm doing C sharp in Lua again. Uh, hey, welcome to the stream. We're uh, creating a little bit of a, uh, a, a example from Link 2 or Zelda 2 in Pixel Vision 8, my, my little game engine. All right, then all we're gonna do is set the gem y equal to gem and y. That should do something. Let's just see real quick. I'm just like pulling this. That's oh, doing jack, huh? Uh, why is that? Let's do this. An attempt to perform arithmetic on a nil value. Oh, that's why. Should be uh, gem dot speed. There we go. Okay, so the uh, the stone is going up, and it's going to stop right there. Now I actually want to make the uh, end position a little bit lower. Uh, that it doesn't have that drop shadow, so that should be y should be uh, ninety nine. So let's see. So this is like really slow. Um, and there we go. So so that's that's the basic animation that happens at the end of the game, um, where the or at the end of a palace where the stone moves into into place, right? Let, let's let's double check that and just take a look. Yeah, okay, so it is off center. I just wanted to make sure it was off center. It does look, it, it doesn't follow the line of the nose. It just goes up on its own. But, okay, cool. So, uh, all we want to do is we just want to make sure that, in fact, I think we can actually keep this example pretty, pretty simple. Um, so, and as you see, we're now up to 14 steps. So, um, all right. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to quick, take a quick little break. I want to um, uh, I want to actually um, go have a quick snack. I think what I'm going to do is um, just just for uh, shits and giggles while I'm gone, we're just going to leave this here. Oh, we should increase the speed. 
This seems like really slow. I think the speed, let's do something more like uh, 50. And then we'll just leave that going off like that. And I'll be, um, let's set up my, uh, my away message. And I might need like, uh, I might take like a 10 minute break and then we're gonna keep going. And then when I come back, we're gonna fix the, um, so let's see, 10. I'll be, I'll be back at 10.50. I know it's a little bit of a long break, but I want to, um, um, I want to have like a good snack because I, I think we're gonna do this until about one o'clock. Let me just look at my count, my, my schedule real quick. Um, where the hell's my calendar? Yeah, we could do this until like about 12, 12 30, 1 o'clock, and then we should be good to go. All right, I'll be back in a few minutes.
Okay, so I'm back. Um, let's see here. What we're going to do next is um, let's get the color palette stuff uh, working. So, excuse me, like all of a sudden I feel like coming back and burping a lot. I'm sorry. Oh, I got to mute. There we go. Well, my boys find burping funny. <laughs> it's probably not appropriate to, uh, to be doing that on the stream. So, um, all right, the color palette swapping is going to be a little bit tricky because we're going to need to figure out um, what the uh, what the what the actual colors are and change them. So. So let's let's go and get this thing to a point where we can um, actually see the full cycle. So we start at red, um, and then from red it goes to black. So black's going to be pretty easy. So let's let's see if we can get a basic cycling going here, and. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new function called um, swap gem colors. And we're going to pass in the uh, time delta end, and we're going to call this method here swap gem colors. And we'll pass in the time delta. And what we're going to do, we need to, in order to get this to actually work, we need to, uh, so let's do a gem dot colors. And we're going to create a new uh, table. And inside of this table, we're going to create the two palettes. So the, the black is going to be pretty easy. It's just 32, 32, 32. Um, the um, let's do a gem dot uh, gem dot uh, offset equals. I just got to figure out where the offset is. So we're gonna try to make the two colors swap. So we'll start by let's go into the colors here and. Um, we're going to look for the color offset for our gem is at 68. So 68 is our offset and the colors that we use, this is color ID. So what we got to match it back up to is, uh, well, uh, how do I want to do this? I think what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to make the, I'm going to have to make the colors grayscale. So that they all, yeah, I think we're going to make all the colors grayscale. Before we do that, let's see if we can, um, shoot. Yeah, let's make them, let's make them grayscale. Because if, um, if we don't make them grayscale and use a color map, what's going to wind up happening is, um, what's going to wind up happening is it's going to be, it's, it's not, um, the way that, the way the Pixel Vision 8 matches up the colors and the sprites to the uh, colors here is that it, it it looks for the first instance of it. And since all these are the second instance of those colors, all the palette stuff's gonna be all screwed up. Like to sort of illustrate it, if I came here into the sprite and we looked at the gem and I offset it by like five, it's just, it's not gonna work. Um, two, one. It's pulling in this blue. This must be at the end of a color somewhere. Like, let's take a look at that red. So yeah, here it's pulling in this light blue. Is it shifting it over the white? The, yeah, it's that's just it's just gonna make everything a little bit like a mess. So in order to to um, to rectify this, what we need to do is um, come back here. And I'm gonna pull out our color reference. 
and we're going to set up um, our colors and uh, let's make this uh, let's flatten this out and we're going to create a uh, three grayscale colors in fact what I'm yeah we'll do it as grayscale I, I just got to um, I was gonna try to look at another example to see if I wanted to pull it out from something else that already existed workspace one workspace games do I have one that has like a good sandbox maybe I have a good color map here we go This is still, this isn't a great example either. What I want is um, the tool should do chip editor. Yeah, the chip editor would have the right example. So like this is the main, oh, I hate when it does it. This is the color map and this is the main color. Okay. Um, so what I want to do is All right, I'm just, it's, take, it's gonna take me a second to sort of wrap my head around how I want to do the um, do this, but let's let's copy these over here. We're gonna create two uh, two palettes, and um, I want to get uh, back in this uh, sandbox. This, this is an older project. We're gonna open this up, and we're gonna copy out these. Uh, these four grayscale images and just paste them right here. And that means that we can do this. So we're gonna map all of the colors to this first palette right here. And the way that we trick the game engine into doing it is by, um, let me, uh, let me flatten all this. The way that we do this is we create some unique colors here. So these three grayscale colors are unique. You're not gonna find them anywhere else in the palette, right? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna map all these colors to these three grayscale, or actually it's gonna be these three grayscale, so that when it parses everything, it'll see this. And then the way that the color map does is that it's gonna say, okay, well, this is the space in memory and this is where it actually exists in the real color space and everything will look like this. So it's sort of hard to explain. I have to do like a much better job at sort of, I have to do a much better job at, um, at documenting this stuff. But once I go through and do it, you'll sort of see what I'm talking about. Um, this is breaking everything, but we'll, we'll fix that in a minute. So I'm gonna to go to the next palette and I'm just going to um, uh, I'm just gonna swap this stuff out. And let's do this. We're gonna take these two colors. We can do these at the same time. This and this are now gonna be here. And this and this are now going to be here. All right, so we zoom out, we're gonna see, this is gonna be a little bit sort of messy. Oh, hey, look, I screwed this up. Uh, bad Jesse. All right, let's try that again. <laughs> uh, I What I did was I, um, I had the, when I merged the layers together, I left link in a transparent state. All right, there we go. Let's hide those, perfect. All right, now I'm gonna, uh, I'll put that over there. All right, so we're gonna try this again. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy out uh, and this will actually let me fix it. All right, so we're gonna take this palette and we're gonna copy it below. Then uh, we're gonna overlay our grayscale 
to the first um, palette space in memory, which is right here. And we'll just get rid of this. So the top is going to be the color map. And the bottom is going to be the, um, we can actually hide this for right now. We don't need this. The bottom is going to be the, the place where it maps the colors. So again, we're going to change all the colors here to this grayscale so that you'll see it's in this position here. It'll just wind up mapping to right here when we load in. So all right, so back back to doing this again. So what we're going to do is um, let's, let's merge all this stuff together. Let's zoom out, make sure we got everything where it needs to be. Good. Um, and we're going to start by selecting um, the first colors in each of the palettes. Um, and I'm also going to make sure that I don't change them here. All right, so all we need to do now is select the first grayscale color and we'll map it. Then we'll do the next uh, column of colors. I would. I want to try to zoom in, but I also want to take a look at what's happening here with with this guy. Uh, and the next color is going to be this light gray. But let's. Um, all right. Let's make sure that we don't mess up any colors, and we're going to turn that gray. And now the next round of colors are going to be this uh, light light gray and. There we go. All right, so now if we go back, we see everything is now in this sort of like off grayscale. And I'm going to uh, pull this out. And in fact, uh, we're gonna have to redo all the color mapping stuff. Now, luckily the sprites should all be in the same place, but um, we might just have to like rebuild a few things which isn't, it isn't the end of the world. I mean, this is sort of set up in a way that, that makes it easy to do. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna get rid of the sprite cache. Let's move this guy to trash. Um, well, yeah, let's, let's see how I wanna export it. All right, I'm gonna export, I'm gonna export this and we're gonna save this in the sandbox as our um, sprites. Now, in order for this to work, I need to get rid of the sprite cache because that's what the engine's gonna load up automatically. And let's get rid of the tile map JSON while we're at it. And we'll just rebuild that. And then um, we're gonna also export this um, to the tile map. Save, replace, and we'll open back up the tile map. And then we just need to um, just mask this off again. So we use our mask color and we save that. And now our tile map and our sprite should work. So um, let's do this. We have our colors. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new file and we're gonna call this uh, color map.png. And I'm gonna copy these colors over here. We're gonna paste them into our first palette and we're gonna get rid of the old colors. It's a, it's, it's a little complicated. I have to come up with a much better system uh, for explaining how to do this mapping stuff, but no, wait, did I just, I didn't mean to do that. Well, let's just save this out. Uh, I wanna save this as the color map, save, replace, and I'm just gonna undo the damage that I've done here. All right, so now if we, um, refresh this what we're going to see is uh on page one and page two of our colors we're getting the same colors these are our palettes and if we look at the color map and we come here you'll see that the first palette is now gray if we go to colors you'll see that it's this brown green and uh, tan color our sprites when we import them all you'll now notice that all the sprites are mapped to the same exact um they're mapped to the same exact color palette, which is that green, brown, and, and whatever, right? So if we run the game now, you'll see everything is all the same color. What we need to do is go in and now remap all the stuff. 
So this like made the uh, tutorial like exponentially more complicated. Um, and there are lots of ways that we could do that. First off, the background color here, we're gonna set this to 32, so we see it as black. Um, now, we can go ahead and uh, we can do the math. So the background, um, so this is, this would technically be the zero position for the color. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So if I come here and I change the color offset to 16, you'll see that it's now red. Um, and this is like, I, I don't have a fast way of doing this. The best way to do it is we can save this out and it's going to create something called a, a tile JSON, uh, a tile color offset JSON file for us. And we're just going to uh, open that up, tile uh, color offset JSON. Now, I think I might have just found the bug. I thought that I saved this as 16, but here's what we're going to do. We're going to replace every uh, one of these with uh, 16. In fact, let's just make sure we do this correctly. Let's, um, we're just gonna replace everything, every zero uh, with 16. Um, and that was uh, 30. So now let's go in here and we're gonna revert. We're gonna reload this up. And you'll see now that uh, all of our tiles are, um, our tiles are, are sort of looking correct, but the problem is, is that our, this should be, this first round of uh, stuff should be set to zero because we don't want to offset the background. We want the background to be set to 32 and saved. So, um, what I want to do is I'm going to take the a few rows here. Let's see. Let's see if we can just figure this out um, by just going here and saying this is zero. This is the part where it's sort of like really manual, and I, I haven't come up with a good solution for it yet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look for the next zero. Right here. Okay, so all of these, all of these 16s now, we're just gonna replace with 16 is gonna equal uh, zero, and we wanna do this um, only in a selection and do replace all. All right, so we're gonna save that, and now, We're gonna refresh and you'll see the background is now correct. And what we need to do next is we just need to go to this guy and it's 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. It should be 16, it should be 20. And, um, I'm kind of confused as to why the background is um, is like that. Sorry, there's no there's no easy way to do this. This is the because this one's more complicated. I just have to um, do this by hand. I should actually come up with a way of selecting multiple tiles, but what I'll probably do is. Um, I'll probably give you the example already written, like with all this stuff already set up. And uh, you can, you don't have to do all this manual labor. Like the goal is to create like a fun little thing. What I got to figure out though, and what's irking me right now is that it looks like, um, it looks like the background color is messed up there. So we're gonna take a look at what, why that why that's shifting, that shouldn't shift, that should be zero. I wonder if that's a bug in Pixel Vision 8. 
this is like one of the reasons why I do this stuff is that um, I'm constantly trying to build little demos and examples and stuff to test out edge cases in Pixel Vision 8. I could probably like do something like this, where if I save this and I look for, um, there should be a place where there's like a bunch of 20s. Let me like set this to 20, save it and refresh and that should, I should, I could, I should be able to do this row by row. There we go. Set this guy to 20. This guy to 20 and we'll just, uh, and what's going to wind up happening is if I, if I remember correctly, let me look back at the comp. So these pink tiles also exist. Um, so we're going to have to do, um, we're going to do some, we're going to have to build another palette. What, um, what we should probably do is, um, I think the easiest way to do this is, let me, I'm going to set these, uh, these things to 20 and I'm going to do something in a second. I, I'm trying, I'm trying to work this out in my head as I'm doing it and I'm making it up off the cuff. So it makes things a little bit more challenging. I'm going to ignore this guy. I think I'm going to use the Sprite builder in order to build him. And we're going to have to set up a separate pal, but it's going to, I'm going to need to know all the positions for this stuff and where to, uh, where to change the palette. Uh, 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 ah, I'm like stuttering. Um, it's going to, it's going to be a little bit, it's not going to be as straightforward as I'd like. Let me just save this real quick. We'll get the basics of it saved and then I'll figure out how to get it to be a little easier. The goal with any tutorial is to like, like, I don't want to like, I don't want to teach you like all the mundane stuff. I just want to teach you the fun stuff, right? So we just got to figure out how to um, how to simplify this. So that's twenty. Um, all of this stuff needs to be twenty. Right? Did I did I screw this up, or is it still working right? Yeah, I, I figured. Whoops, cancel. It'll take me like a few more minutes to get this going. Once once I get this going, it'll be it'll be smooth sailing from there. Everything else will will sort of click. So, all right. So what I'm looking for is the next twenty. By the way. It used to be you had to do this stuff in like a hex editor and like the experience is is strangely similar like there were so many times i had to go into like a hex editor and like change the values of how like colors and stuff worked um all by hand it was brutal like doing this stuff for real was like was not fun um all right the reason I couldn't find that last one was that this needs to be uh, 20. We'll save it. And um, now what we're looking for is a 20 to a 16. I think it's this right here. There should be like another 20 around here somewhere. No, I don't know. Maybe I'll just do this one by hand and uh, and move on. It was getting a little complicated to edit it. Eventually the uh, built-in tile map editor will allow you to, um, eventually the built-in tile map editor will do all this for you. Or like, or not do all this for you, but it'll allow you, like I'll have some stuff in there to let you select a certain type or select multiple tiles and uh, do this. All right, so that works. What I wanna do next is um, I wanna get this idle into a different palette. And it's gonna be a little confusing because what, what I wanna 
what, what's going to wind up happening is um, this palette. Oops. This palette is going to be the same when it starts out. Um, and we're going to save this guy out. But what we need to do is um, come into here and instead of 22, it's going to be 24, 23. Oh, I need to refresh it. If you're, if you're just tuning in, what I'm doing is um, I'm taking an example out of uh, Zelda 2 and I'm trying to rebuild it in my game engine, Pixel Vision 8. Just to show off that one Pixel Vision 8 can do like authentic 8-bit stuff, but I like I really like showing off these techniques that were used in old Nintendo games. Um, 24. So there we go. Okay. So all the uh, 20s here are gonna have to be turned into 24s. So let's um, let me see if I can find the 24. Save. All right. So what I'm looking for is. Um, 24. All right, so anything up here, if it says uh, 16, should be changed into a 24. I'm reliving the, um, no, I said 24, right? 24. Uh, whoops, now it's 20. I did that wrong. I'm reliving the uh, the joys of of what hex editors used to be like. Uh, let's refresh this now, and wh what's going to happen is uh, oh, I I didn't save, so that's what that's what's going to happen. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck's going on? Uh, that sucked. That wasn't what I wanted. All right, so. I think we're gonna have to do this by hand. <laughs> That's fine, I'll just redo this by hand real quick. I'll do it so that you don't have to. That's that's what kind of guy I am. Um, wait, no, I see what it is. I just need to change 20 to 24. So we can make that easier. All right, 24, so let's find 24 real quick. 24. All right, so if it says 20, change the 24 within selection, replace all. Save it, and now let's reload it, and all right, cool. We're getting closer. You could, you could tell because it has the green outline. That's got to be a bug. I'm like... I'm a little nervous about that bug. 24, 24, 24. Basically that green is shifting and it really, it shouldn't. I don't know why it's shifting like that. Like the background color should be empty. So maybe something's not just rendering correctly. I'm hoping it's just in the tile map editor. The internal renderer, when it's supposed to see like negative one, which is a transparency, it's just supposed to like leave it empty, not shift it. So I'm sure it's like one line of code somewhere that needs to be fixed. All right, save. And all right, this is good. Let's go back and run it. Oh, hey, look, it fixed it. All right, so it must just be an error in the tile map editor. Whew. All right, I can fix that. That means I can fix it in Lua. Uh, maybe, I don't know. All right, so we're back to, um, ironically enough, we're back to where we began. <laughs> it's where we were like 30 minutes ago. But what's what's happened and what's, what's important now is that all of the colors are now mapped to their own palettes. I mean, this is a pretty advanced technique. One of the things in Pixel Vision 8 is like, if you don't, if you don't go and do this like palette setup stuff and you just use regular colors, you don't have to worry about any of this crap. Because I'm doing the palette swapping stuff, that makes it a little bit more challenging. Um, so here we see we have two palettes. This is going to be the tiles that are on the bottom of the screen. 
So you'll see these uh, those big squares at the bottom. They're gonna have a fixed palette. But when it comes to changing the, uh, well, you know what? Oh, watch, watch that I did, watch that I did all this for nothing. Shit. I should actually like, I should really like watch the reference. Son of a. All right, well, we can make this a little simpler. Um, we only need one palette. Damn it. All right, well, now I can fix that. So pfft. that was fun. That was a fun exercise. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to change anything that says 24 back to 20. Um, replace all. Save. Uh, go back into Photoshop. I'm going to get rid of this additional palette we don't need. I thought the bottom tiles stayed the same color. So they're all, they all changed. See, this is it. Like on the Nintendo, they had to like share memory, uh, color memory. So they probably, they didn't have a lot of variation between stuff. So, all right. So now if we come here, everything should be mapped correctly. It looks good. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to now um, compress this and we're going to go into here and we're going to create a, um, a compressed tile map. And now if we go back in and we just open up tiled. Wow, I swore I already agreed to this. You'll see when it loads up, it's just gonna give us the grayscale. The one thing I wasn't able to figure out, there's no way that I'm, I'm really gonna be able to figure this out. Um, what I can't figure out right now, oh, I, what I won't be able to figure out is like, tiled doesn't have any notion of like swapping color palettes and stuff. So you're sort of stuck with this, like having to edit in this grayscale. Uh, but that's what the built-in tile map editor is gonna be for as I add more and more features to it. So, all right. Um, all right, so next on the list is let's get the palette swapping stuff working. I was starting to get that working. What I wanted to make sure is that we have our own palette for the gem, right? And we're gonna go and we're gonna change. Oh, the, we haven't. Uh, we have to change the gem. So when we go to draw the gem, we need to um, do uh, false, false. Um, we're gonna do false, false. Draw mode sprite, and we're gonna set the color offset to eight, I believe. Well, now, one, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, five. Four, there we go, four, okay, cool. So, um, what, what our plan is, is so on the Nintendo, it's, so like, let's take a look at our sample again, right? Our, our reference is right here. You can see it just sort of flickers. Um, it's not like they set up different palettes for each of these um, different flickers. They only had one palette um, per like anything that could change color. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna need to uh, on the fly say like, hey, take this color and put this color here. So now we could do that pretty easily with black. Um, so let's see, we're gonna go here to this uh, offset uh, gem um, color delay equals zero and uh, gem uh, color time equals, um, I think it's pretty quick. We'll do 0.5 for right now. Um, and what basically what this swap gems code is gonna do is, um, Let's do this, uh, color offset equals zero. All right, uh, so in essence, we're gonna uh, change the, um, Yeah, 
Yeah, okay, so we're gonna set this to uh, three, right? Four, why is it, why am I like now? There we go, four. All right. Um, so what we're gonna do is as we continue to go through, well, that just sets it up at the right palette. That's fine. We're never gonna change that. What we wanna do is um, let's go find the colors that make up the gem right now. So, um, that's gonna be a little bit harder. Um, so let's see, the first color, wait, what the hell is this? Oh, did I never fix that color? Crap. I never found the suitable replacement for this color. Well, it's gonna be you now. No, you're too like dark. I guess that's what it's gonna be. All right, we'll just leave it at that. I mean, I'm not going for perfect accuracy here. All right, so let's save the color. So what I need to figure out is like now, where is this orange? So, um, let's see here. We're gonna do this like half ass, but it's fine. What we'll do, it's uh, F8, let's come back here. Let's refresh this real quick. So this should be F83800, perfect. We just gotta find the other orange that is F8300. All right, so it's color 39. <laughs> Dude, could you imagine doing this on a computer that could barely like even display color at the time, trying to program this stuff? Like this is, I, I, I don't like, I hesitate to say that I've made this easier than a real Nintendo, but not by much, <laughs> not by much. Uh, what I'm looking for here is FCA044. That is 53, 53. Uh, next up is this uh, white, which I already know that is, that is, there's only one white. Well, there's two whites, I lied. Um, that might be the F888, so we'll do 14. 14, okay. Woo. All right, so what we're gonna try to do real quick is uh, we're gonna build a very basic swap gem color um, method here. And the way that this will work is that we're gonna do uh, gem dot color delay equals um, color time equals gem dot color time plus time delta. And now if gem dot color time is greater than gem dot color delay end and gem dot color time equals zero. We also want to do uh, gem dot uh, color index equals one and Before I even like start adding in the color swap stuff, let's just make sure that this doesn't throw like an error and that it's running. So right now what's happening in the background is it's it's going through, it's counting off how many seconds have, or how much time has occurred between each frame and if it's past the, the delay and then resetting the, uh, the timer. So what we can do is um, we could change this. Well, actually, I'll show you a quick example. What we're gonna do is, um, well, yeah, we're gonna do uh, this plus one. Uh, if gem.color index is greater than 
gem.colors. Then n gem.color index equals one. So now we're going to loop through and make sure that we um, we're going to loop through and make sure that we actually uh, don't go past an index that doesn't exist. And then the last thing we need to do is uh, local colors is going to equal gem dot colors uh, gem dot color index, right? So now we're going to get a reference to those colors. I'm just letting it. It's running. I'm not tracing anything out, so you really can't see. But it is run. It's running, and I'm just making sure it's not throwing an error. And now the moment of truth. What we're going to do is um, so um, for um, gem dot colors, or actually, what we'll do is for uh, total colors. Uh, swap color. So now this is where I screwed. I don't think I have this. I don't think this is documented. So vision eight. Let's go to the docs. I don't think I've documented this API. I don't want to sign in. Um. All right. So. Let's go to the docs. Resume this course. There should be a um, launching, saving games, game creator. Where's the API? I thought I had a, uh, oh, there we go. It's, it's just crossed out. My brain wasn't like, accepting it, uh, swap color, color, replace color. All right, so what we could do with the replace color is that we could take a existing color and switch them around. The replace color method allows you to quickly change a color to an existing color without triggering the display chip to parse and cache a new hex value. So, so setting colors on the fly is like really expensive. Every time you change colors, um, the engine has to like recache them for the next frame, and that could be like, that could that could that could be expensive. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a replace. Oh, so I did have it. In, all right, replace color, and we're gonna take the um, gem gem dot offset plus i. And then we're gonna do colors uh, I. <laughs> Let's see if this works. Um, it's sort of flickering, but it's happening so fast, you really can't see what's going on. Um, I also think that it's not the right area. So let's um, let's do this. Let's make this a uh, one. All right, so now you're seeing it's sort of flickering. Oh, I know why. Here's the problem. The delay should be 0.5 and the color time should be a zero. All right, so now you're seeing it's starting to swap a little, but it doesn't look like the colors are correctly Swapping. Let's move this down to um, 67. What should happen is that everything should turn black. There we go. Look at that. All right. So now if I came up with another uh, palette here and we made this like one, two, three, it'll completely swap out. All right. So now we got to do is find the colors that match for. Um, now we got to do is find the colors that match for. Um, the movie. So I think it wasn't, there was only like a few frames that it went through. Let's, uh, let's pull this out. Let's go back here and try to take a look. So there's black, blue. All right, I gotta get this to where it's a little higher so I could see it. So black, 
blue. So it looks like um, the first color is a uh, white. So um, do, 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 do. what I want to do is I want to go and get the white color. So that's 14. So we'll start with a 14. Then there's a dark blue, which looks like uh, there's two dark blues and a light blue. So I think it's these two right here. So we've got to make sure is that the uh, this white stays the same. So this is actually the 14 and it's the first two colors that we need to swap. I don't know how to explain. I don't know how to explain this. This is something I know how to do because I've just done it for so many years. But uh, all right, so we get this dark blue and this light blue. and. So we're going to do 12 and 15. 12 and 15. So here's what we can do. Let's just test this out that this blue looks right and we'll just disable all the colors. Whoops. And uh, and run this. And then the whole thing should just stay as, as blue. Oh, it looks good. I mean, that's pretty close. I'd buy that for a dollar. All right, so now if we come back here and we rerun it, we now get red, black, blue, red, black, blue. Looks great. Um, we could actually speed this up now so that it, it happens more in line with what was happening in the game. I mean, again, I'm not, I'm not going for pixel perfect. I, want, I just want to give you the basic idea of like, hey, so we have this object that we need to flicker. How do we make it flicker? Well, first off, we need to give the sprites their own palette. And then we set up a bunch of colors and we go through and we um, change the colors as we go through and, um, and run things. So, I'm gonna do one thing here. I'm gonna call a swap, swap colors. Or actually what we're gonna do is um, swap colors. Now I was trying to think of like how to structure it, structure this, but it's gonna be something like gonna be something like this. We're gonna have to figure out how to combine these two things. Because I think, well, I don't know if it happens, I don't know if it happens, like, they're not in the same. I think they're at the same, um, they're using the same interval, but what happens is that um, one thing, like the stone stops swapping when it gets into place. So that's gonna make things a little bit more a little bit more complicated, but we'll uh, we'll figure that out. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and uh, I just wanted to see if there's any other colors that this thing turns into. It does a green and then it goes back to red. What's interesting is that it's actually changing it's still flickering. Okay, so it doesn't stop. It's still flickering while the other thing is flickering. So we just gotta get this green version going. What it looks like, it's really grainy. It's hard to see. What it looks like is that it's uh, it's flipped where the uh, highlight is now, well, yeah, it looks like the highlight is Lynx green. So which one was Lynx Greens? This is um, 85D854, 85D854, so 24. Uh, that might actually be the base color. I think it's the, that's the highlight. 
that's the highlight. Um, the base, so that's the highlight. The base color is his brown. And the outer edge is uh, an orange. Yeah, the outer edge is now light. So it's dark, medium, light. So the outside, so the light part is his, is his tunic color, which we have 24. The inside is the brown. So let's go find his brown. That's ACDC, <laughs> AC7C7, AC7, all right, so that's 41. 41 and uh, the last color which will be the other highlight is um, this tan which I believe is Link's skin color I mean they really they may have even swapped no nah, I don't think they swapped at this point they're, they're just replacing the colors um, let's see which one is his skin color is F-O-D-O-B F-O F O D F O D O B okay O two uh, let's run this now and take a look. All right, so now we're getting the, the same effect. I, I swear it's even faster. Like maybe it's like a fraction of a there we go. So now we're getting uh, we're getting that effect. And now what I think we're going to do is um, I'm going to get rid of this color delay, color time, and color offset. And I think I'm just going to um, let's do this. Actually, there's too many of them. Um, What we're going to do is we're going to sync the background up to the actual, um, we're going to sync the gem and the background up together and we're going to put that inside of the update method. So I'll sort of show you what's, uh, what's going on here. We're going to replace all. Again, I, I have to like sort of think this through in like a weird way because I don't like in order to get um, the tutorial stuff to generate out in, a, in, a, in the correct step by step, I have to sort of structure this in different pieces. But let's make sure that I didn't break anything real quick. All right, so that's still working. So what we're going to do is we're going to move this up here and we're going to take this and cut this out here and then we're going to um, do this pull this out and we're going to call swap gem color here right here Because then the next thing we'll do is we'll um, I almost I almost think that I want to do this all as like um, Let's see if this works right now. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna swap the palette for the uh, totem. And uh, that one's gonna be a little bit more challenging. What we're gonna, what we're gonna actually try to do is, um, 
we're going to try to redraw the totem back into the tile map and uh, let's see how I want to do this. I'm going to pull out Well, actually, we don't need to do that. They're all they're all they're all at the right. Oh, look, we can just do it this way. Um We're just going to call this um It's not the gem. It's going to be the um statue and we're going to put all this stuff in there so the statues offset is this and the statues colors are this and um, swap statue colors All right, so swap gem color, swap statue color. But what we need to do is uh, change the offset from 67. Let's take a look at this real quick here. If the, this palette is 67, this palette is going to be 83. One twelve. One twelve. What are we doing here? Unexpected symbol near function. Offset colors. Oh, here we go. We need to have one more closing bracket. Hey, look at that. It's pretty, that's pretty close. Now we gotta do is get the right colors, but uh, man, it's so fast. It happens so fast. Point oh All right, so what we want to do is um, we want to set a flag that um, if active statue uh, active equals true, then actually what we could do is uh, we could do this. So we don't have to like add code. Like we're trying to get this is in like these layers that once you start writing this stuff out, it like cascades. So what we're going to look for is to see that uh, if uh, let's do this now. If gem is uh, greater than. is uh well is equal to this all right what we want to do is we only want to have this flicker there and then we're uh then we're basically we're done with it um So I think that's just sort of where I'm going to end it, where it like it goes there and it flickers, and then that's like the end of the demo. Uh, maybe what we'll do is we'll have it where like if it flickers for a certain amount, like after a certain amount of time, it would reset itself. But I mean, we could have it stop too. Like if what we could do is at the very end here is that like you know if um. I don't know. We could we could do something else to to 
to count how many times um, that this this goes on. Well, what we could do is um, I don't know. Let's let's go through. Let's just get the colors correct, and then I'll feel, figure out how I want to end this tutorial. So um, we have the pink. Then we have this white with the blue. So um, white with the blue. That one's going to be interesting. Let's see. Let's get to. There's like a light blue here. So the outer edge is dark. So we need a 52. Oh, I didn't map it out. I, I, gotta, I gotta map out the first set of colors, but we'll get, we'll get to that one second. So 52, then light gray is 14. And that dark blue is, I'd say it's closer to like that 31. But I'm not gonna win like authenticity here. 31, um, let's go in and find the, uh, the correct IDs for the pink. So that is F8, B8, F8. F eight B A F eight F eight F eight B F eight. So that's a uh, color ID zero. Uh, this is F eight seven eight F eight F eight seven eight. I think there was that one eighteen. And then this one is 9400. I think there's only one like 940048. So that's 46. And then uh, coming back into here, there is now a blue. So the out is this like turquoise color, which is seven. A uh, I think it's like this and then that. I feel like that blue is like way too bright, but maybe that's just the way my colors are. So 20, so wait, it would be 20 and uh, 32. Thirty-two. Then there's a, a red and it it matches the same. Like I didn't change this 32. This was what the white 20, 20. Thirty-two. All right, so we just copy this guy, and then all we change is the center color, right? So that would be the white one, because white is what fourteen. What was twenty? Right, blue, white. I must maybe maybe I skipped this one. Did I? Wonder what fifty two is. What is fifty two? Fifty two. Fifty two. So that should be fifty two. Oh my god, this is so frustrating. 
It's, this is just this is a pain in the butt. But once once I get the colors mapped out, everything will be fine. Let's let's just go through and test these out real quick. Um, the first one should be this, which is our pink. Let's test this out. That's our blue. What through the error? Attempt to get a value length of nil. Oh, I see why. There's, um, this should have a uh, gem color index equals one. Wait, this isn't making any sense. I think, uh, is that Python? No, this is Lua. This is Lua. Um, color index. What I wanted to do was uh, color time, color index plus one. Here's what we're gonna do. This needs to be inside of here. Oh cool, I lost my cursor again. Then that's color index. And you are going to be uh, statue color index. Yeah, his jokes are a little off sometimes. Don't mind him. <laughs> uh, st statue uh, color index equals uh, one. And what we need to just do is go through in here and we're gonna replace um, gem dot with statue dot. All right, let's see if this runs now. What was happening is that they were both referencing the same index. And so, okay, so now we got the blue correct. The blue is good. Now let's comment this out and let's test out the white. That's the dark blue. What do I, were there two blues? Am I missing something here? White, dark blue. So this should be Wait a minute, what the hell was the first one? Why do I have two blues? Oh, shit, wrong, wrong place. All right, let's see here. Well, I like that blue. That looks good, but it's not the blue that we're looking for. We need to make this uh, white. So that inner blue area needs to be 14. I think that was the problem, I had a typo. All right, so redoing this again. Uh, white, perfect. Blue. Uh, this red, it looks like it's the same red as the bricks. What is that? Eight eight one four eight eight one four. So that's forty nine. What did I say? I was like, I'm like spacing out. It's getting that time where I need to stop, anyways. Forty nine. Get rid of that. Now, if we rerun this, 49, oh, let me run the game. 
We get that, but then it doesn't have that deep blue. So why? 31, 31. There we go. And then there's a green. And the green looks like the same as his tunic. So let's go in here and find Link's tunic color. 58D85, 58D85, which is 24. Right, and it's the same blue and white. Okay, cool. So, they, I mean, they, they didn't really like do a lot to um, to this one, but now it uh, isn't doing shit. Hey, what's up with that? Hey, buddy. Boom, there we go. All right, and that wasn't bad. I mean, did that in, I don't know, what time did I start? Like 9.30, 10.30, so like in about an hour and a half. I mean, a lot of it was just me trying to figure out how I wanted to do this in Pixel Vision 8, but uh, yeah, it's pretty good. I think the only other thing that we would add if there's a way to like, I think honestly I would end it at this tutorial. I think if you wanted to stop it, then you could just come up with your own timer or whatever your effect is. I mean, we could have it where like the um, statue counts. Like, let's do this. We could do um, uh, we could do a uh, delay equals um, we could, we could have a delay for a, a second and uh, time equals zero. And at the very end, we'll pass in like the time delta. And then inside of this, what we would do is um, if uh, what we would do uh, statue dot time equals uh, statue dot time plus time uh, delta and do uh, time delta and then uh, if statue dot time is greater than statue dot uh, delay then end and we would do um, oh Thanks everyone. Glad you guys sort of liked it. Um, wait, no one said this was crappy. I just, it's kind of weird like doing these demos off the top of my head when I statue dot delay, uh, statue dot time equals zero. When I don't like really have any idea of like what I want to do. Um, what I, what I do want to get done though is um, start 58, set this to, uh, Start. We're going to set the uh, gem y equal to gem start, right? And then uh, statue statue time equals zero. We'll reset the timer, um, and then that should reset the gem. So basically after a second of it flashing, it'll put the gem back down and restart. There we go, perfect. And that, my friends, is what happens when you beat a palace in Zelda 2 uh, on the Nintendo, but it is, it is running in Pixel Vision 8. It's really, I mean, this is only, it's not a lot of code. It's like, what, 149 lines of code? So as a tutorial, this is only 39 steps to build. I mean, outside of all the prep work. So 
I mean, the big thing that I need to do is um, the big thing that I need to do is go through and comment in all the code. So if you're just tuning in uh, and you didn't hear me say it earlier, the, the thing on the right uh, that's previewing the step-by-step -step stuff, that's actually, uh, it's, a, it's a plugin that I wrote called uh, Ghostwriter and it'll take my code and it turns them into step-by-step -step tutorials. So in this case here, if we wanted to comment uh, the step two with the gem, I could add something here where um, this table will store all of the values we need to um, all of the values that we need to uh, render uh, the gem. And I hit save. You'll see right below it. It now puts that out as a comment that this table will store all the stuff that we need as, as a gem. And then it just goes through and it reads the code. And wherever the breaks are in the code, it's smart enough to um, to sort of analyze. I don't think it's smart enough though to understand that it's inside of a, that's one thing I need to fix. Like it just lost this um, offset thing. Oh, well actually, no, five, six, seven. It did figure it out. Interesting, cool. All right, I so I could break this up into multiple steps if I wanted to, but again, I'm probably not going to, like these tutorials are meant to just be like, hey, just, just enter this code, read a little bit and get context. It's not this like in depth, this is like the rendering pipeline and how everything works. So I would just go through, comment this in pretty light. I could also add like more comments and stuff. In fact, what I would do to structure this better was I would probably put this here and then uh, we don't need this. I already got rid of a step. Um, uh, we could do, uh, that's fine. We don't need this. Um, I feel like I have to draw the, I have to draw this. For, so what I would probably do is just comment this like, um, this draws the gem to the display using the draw sprites uh, method. It requires a table of sprite uh, IDs and X and Y position a width. and a width. In addition, we can set flags for flipping uh, the sprite horizontally or vertically, which will make uh, set to false. Finally, we need to add a uh, draw mode which is set to sprite and the color offset to put the sprite um, color IDs in the correct palette. Boom. So then uh, we come down here and when I draw that, uh, let's see, where was that draw method? Here we go. It'll give you, um, add this code to the following to the draw function. It'll tell you to draw that, and then it goes through and explains sort of why. So that's, um, that at a high level is what Ghostwriter is. What I'll probably wind up doing is uh, later tonight, I'll probably go through, either later tonight or maybe tomorrow, I'll go through and uh, I'll write this up and it would be good to, I'll probably wind up posting it to um, to the Pixel Vision 8, um, to, there's like a membership that I have, so for Fantasy Console Club. And I haven't decided yet what I, I might just make it a, um, maybe I'll make it a free tutorial. I, I gotta start figuring out some value for people who pay for uh, for the uh, the pro level stuff so I can get more people doing that. So maybe what I'll do is I'll turn this into a pro um, tutorial and, uh, and go from there. I'll figure something out. Anyways. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna wrap it up. Thanks everyone for watching. Uh, I got a, a busy day ahead of me, so as much as I I would love to goof off on this all day, I I gotta actually get some work done. 
But uh, I think this got me out of my funk. It was like it was cool to build. It was cool to build something really quick, and uh, it's nice to see that it it's actually possible. Like I can take sprites that are ripped right out of a, a NES game and recreate it exactly how it looks and feels on the NES. So thanks again, and uh, I'll uh, I'll try to stream something interesting tomorrow. Maybe we'll do another one of these tomorrow. There's some other cool stuff that I, I've been pulling out of Zelda 2 from my recordings that I'd love to uh, recreate. So thanks for watching. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye.